Hello, today we're going to talk about HTTP modules and how we can use them to help us to extend ASP.NET. You may not realize it, but you use HTTP modules all the time whenever you're writing ASP.NET code. You'll see here I have open the machine.config for this particular machine. And in there there's a section for HTTP modules. If I close this and go look at the web config for the machine, you'll see that I have the HTTP module section and there are several modules enabled by default and these are ones that you're probably familiar with output caching session windows forms and passport authentication role manager authorization profile and error handling so even though you may not realize it the ASP.NET architecture uses HTTP modules and we can tie into that same mechanism to extend ASP.NET and get it to do what we want it to. So today I'm going to show you how to create a module that will capture the begin request and end request events and will modify the HTML. The procedure to create an HTTP module is the same regardless of what functionality we want in it. The first thing we do is we create a class that will implement IHTTP module interface. We then handle certain events inside of that class. Once we have the functionality that we want in that class, we register the class with the web config. Then when a request comes into our web server, the ASP.NET infrastructure will see that we've registered a module and will insert it in the appropriate place in the processing pipeline. So we'll start off and create a new website. and we'll call our website HTTP module demo VB and we'll use the Visual Basic language to create this. So now that Visual Studio has created the project in a web form for me I'm going to go in and add a few controls to it. The first thing I'm going to add is a label and I'm going to name it time and then I'm going to add a button and name it button submit and now that I've set up my basic UI I want to go in and set up events for this page So in the page load event, I want to make sure that every time the page reloads, I set the value of the time label to the current time. And now my page is set up, so I want to go and add the class that will implement my HTTP handler. To do that, I need to add an app code directory to my solution. and inside of the app code folder I'm going to add in class and I'm going to name that class request data I'll need to add an import statement and import system.web and then in my class I need to say that it implements the IHTTP module interface. When I click enter, Visual Studio 2005 will automatically add for me the methods of the IHTTP module interface that I need to add code to. In this case, the dispose method is used if I'm using any managed resources and need to clean them up. Since I'm not planning on using any resources, I won't add any code here. The init method is where I will add 
delegates that will handle the events that are fired when in the page life cycle. So for my example I want to capture the begin request and end request events. These events are fired at the beginning of a request and at the end of the request and they are guaranteed to be fired for every request. There are some other events that I could capture when a request is made including the authenticate request, the authorize request, resolve request cache, acquire request state, and pre-request handler execute. When a response is returned there's the post request handler execute, release request state, update request cache, and end request events. In addition, there are three events that might be fired in a non-deterministic order as part of the processing pipeline. They are pre-send request headers, pre-send request content, and error. You can check out the online documentation to find out what each of these events does. So I'm going to add handlers for the begin request and end request methods. And now I need to add the on begin request and on end request methods. In the on begin request method, I'm going to capture the time that the request comes in and store it as part of the HTTP request. So the first thing I need to do is cast the sender to an HTTP application object. Then I'm going to add a new item into the context collection of this HTTP application. And I will call it begin request time. And then I wouldn't recommend that you do this, but just for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm going to make the request pause for one second. Now in the on end request event, I'm going to take that time and I'm going to display that to the user. So I'll start off by writing my event handler, subroutine. And then I'm going to cast the sender as an HTTP application again.
and all I want to do now is write out that begin request time so I can see what it was and I'll use that I'll do that by using the context object the response object and the output dot write line and I'll write out the begin request time now I'm going to compile my application just to make sure I haven't made any syntax errors and since it's compiled successfully I'll go into the web config so I'm going to modify the web.config by adding my HTTP module So I'll add an HTTP module section and in there I'll use the add item and give it a name and I'll call it request data and I'll give it a type which in this case is also going to be request data because that's the name of the class and I'll save the changes to the web config and I'll come over and set my default.aspx as a start page and I will run it and you can see the page came up I forgot to give text to my button but you can see the differences in the time so the, the time at the top is the time when the page load event was fired and the time at the bottom is when the request was first received and you remember we put a one second delay in there so as I click on refresh you'll notice that the times change but there's always at least a second delay between the two times. So hopefully this gives you an idea how you can write your own HTTP module to extend ASP.NET and to provide functionality that you might need. Some more complex but useful examples are writing a custom HTTP module that will allow you to share session state between ASP and ASP.NET. Other examples might be writing an HTTP module that will allow you to do custom authentication of users. Really anytime that you want to intercept a call early on and manipulate really any time that you want to insert your code early on into the processing pipeline or at the end before a response is sent back that's a good time to look at using an HTTP module to provide that functionality <laughs>